I was coming home. The country I grew up in was changing. Two dozen hand grenade attacks in Malmo. Three murders in the first two weeks of 2017, giving an annual murder rate higher than South Africa. Projections indicate Swedes could be a minority in their own country by 2040. The consequences are profound. The Swedish model of highly qualified individuals working in a high trust environment, willing to pay taxes for a welfare state, is being jeopardized. Not to mention the threat to Swedish culture. Astrid Lindgren, women's rights, dancing around the midsummer pole. Will that survive in a country where Swedes are less than majority? And what about the Swedish language? The Swedish people support nationalism in Estonia and the Ukraine, and in the past, the newly decolonized states of Africa and Asia. Only the Swedes must not be allowed to love their own country. You can't sell to Eastern Europe and this multicultural happiness because they were living many hundred years and, and was bleeding and suffering with all this. Det som händer i svenska media liknar mycket mycket den kommunistiska media i, i gamla Polen i den kommunistiska Polen. I, I både i DDR till exempel och i Ryssland tog man och fängslade människor. Ja. Men här förlorar Yeah. We're interested in, in fact-checking and all that kind of stuff, so, so uh, to the extent that that goes against the Swedish brand, I mean, you have a, you, we have a problem. We have cases where uh, research articles have been removed from the university databases because they are uncomfortable with regard to official state policy. So what we are witnessing is actually something probably far more majestic than you know the end of the enlightenment we might we might actually witness the end of you know society as we know it There's a state that's utterly free. Sweden's a country that's a very successful brand. It sells itself on prosperity, advanced technology, and socially progressive values. It all makes for a very successful picture, which the rest of the world largely buys. But is that really the whole story? What we're going to do is peer behind the facade, beyond the image that Sweden projects to the outside world. It's a country where the elites are very powerful, and they push through an ideology at all costs includes multiculturalism and mass immigration over the heads of what the little people think. Mass immigration might not work, and even if it did work, it would change Sweden beyond recognition. The fact is, most people did not vote for it. It's been imposed from above.
hit och leva på bidrag och leva i segregerade bostadsområden. Det är ingenting som Malmö mår bra av. Titta här på Möllemångstorget med alla de olika nationaliteter som präglar detta torg och butikerna runt omkring. Det är verkligen en internationell atmosfär av allra bästa märke. Möllevångstorget representerar just den sortens framtidsmalmö. Dessutom med en mycket väl fungerande marknadsekonomi på torget som vi moderater vill ha. Välkommen, välkommen kära kunder. 21 kronor. Du har. Om man inte har då. 20 kronor jämt, okej, okay, efter det som ser. Swedish authorities have their hands full in the southern city of Malmö with an explosion of Muslim immigrants. 90% of them unemployed, many angry, taking it out on the country that took them in. If we park our car, that will be damaged. So we have to go very often two vehicles. One just to protect the other vehicle and so on. Fear of violence has changed the way police, firemen and emergency workers do their jobs. There are some neighborhoods these Swedish ambulance drivers do not go into without a police escort. They've come under threat from angry crowds who tell them which patients to take, which patients to leave behind. The most liberal asylum laws in Europe mean a city of one quarter million is now one quarter Muslim, changing the face and the idea of what it means to be Swedish. Asylum seekers may bring spouses, brothers, grandparents. Civil servants say the city is swamped. So you have a thousand pupils in a Swedish school? Yeah. How many are Swedes? Two. The beauty about Sweden is the emptiness feeling a neutron bomb or some poison gas has taken out all the population and you get these nice um, empty modernist places I really appreciate it these pictures are juxtaposed Malmo literally that skyscraper outside that were above us and Manhattan they feel that they they are part of the transmutation process of a city that is becoming uh, almost like the world's greatest city. I mean, just give it some time. Why can't Malmo be good at being Malmo and Sweden be good at being Sweden and let New York be New York instead of being a third-rate copy? When I grew up, Malmo was a working-class town. It had a huge harbour which imported things from around the world. Later, Malmo had Europe's largest shipyard, Cockham's, which employed a large proportion of the city's male population and gave Malmo a firmly working-class flavour. In the socialist Sweden in the 1970s, the trade unions were very strong. So was the workers' movement, especially in that cradle of Swedish industrialism, Malmo. In the 1980s, however, the shipyard closed due to competition from the Far East. The city went into economic decline. Then, the bridge to the continent was built. It was one of Europe's longest. Everyone hoped it would signal an economic turnaround. There was a construction boom, as the old harbour was gentrified, and new flats and high-rises were built. Malmo took in, in short order, large numbers of immigrants from the Middle East and Africa. They were supposed to be dynamic, young, the new face of the city that aimed to be the innovation hub of the 21st century. This is uh, Malmo 1 rather than Malmo 2. Uh, this is sort of multiculturalism at work, the positive side. The arrival of these uh, outdoor bars, uh, which was unseen before because of various regulations and which made Sweden seem so much more East European and communist than uh, Denmark or Germany or Holland. Uh, they marked a break with that past um, and 
sort of heralded uh, a more open Sweden. And I think many young Swedes, when they sit here on a Saturday night, they think multiculturalism is just like a big bar or something. They, they sort of think, well, what's it going to lead to? What are the, what's, what's the realities? Firma är skola. Är detta Malmös bästa skola? Nej. Är det inte? Det är Malmös sämsta skola. <laughs> är det det? Varför det då? För att jag sitter. connection to, to each other whatsoever and um, they have all told me about the, the problems that they experience every day especially when it's the time of Ramadan and you know the, the Muslim um, the time for prayers and so on that the other families go together and start getting involved it's like they own them they, they feel like we don't own ourselves they own us they take responsibility over my children if I want to if I want my daughter to like play with this child or this child, they, they, all of a sudden you have families coming over and tell them, no, this, this girl is not good for you, this girl is not good, and your daughter has to do this. And they also control them, right? Your son's going to, 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 to the Friday prayers and so on. And um, they don't necessarily have to have the hijab on, but if they do and they take it off, they can't take it off. So one of them said that I can't take, take off my hijab even though I wanted to. It doesn't seem like there's uh, any kind of interest in getting integrated into in Sweden, in Sweden, or even uh, having their children getting integrated. Because I worked in a school at Sofrinskjuna, which is connected to that area, um, and uh, I know we had lots of problems with our children when we had. Uh, school endings and we were in the church they wouldn't let them go and when we had Swedish traditions no, they wouldn't let them uh, involve <laughs> Are there worries that some people fought in the war and have uh, sort of blood on their hands or done bad things? I have students that have told me that there are lots of people who do sympathize with ISIS and so on that are here they don't tell us who they are, but they know about that. They know more than they can tell us.
Det finns ingen väg tillbaka. Sverige blir aldrig som det varit. Europa är i förändring och Sverige behövs som en trygg plats för människor på flykt. Nu måste vi söka vägar framåt och hitta ett sätt för alla att leva tillsammans. Det är dags att inse att nya svenskar kommer att ta plats. Med kultur, språk och vanor. Och det är dags att se det som en positiv kraft. Att vara svensk måste få vara mer än hur färg och födelse ut. Det måste få vara du, jag och alla tillsammans. Det är inte bara nya svenskar som ska integreras. Alla behöver integreras, även etablerat svenskar. Integration handlar om ömsesidighet. Låt oss skapa en framtid som bygger på lika delar realitet och framtidsro. Låt oss bygga ett land där vi sätter hat och rädsor åt sidan. Vi har alla det nya landet inom oss. I våra synsätt, tankar och handlingar. Det är dags att vi tillsammans formar ett land som är stolt, inkluderande och hållbart. Något nytt. Det nya landet. Rustan is a booster of the new Sweden. Totally buys into the official opinion. Tycker du att Sverige borde ta in eh, fler invandrare än vad det gör redan? Vi har plats för otroligt mycket mer folk här. Ja. Och det är en begåvningsreserv. Ja, det är bara att titta på befolkningspyramiden hur den ser ut. Eh, vi blir allt fler äldre människor. Som behöver hjälp och stöd på olika sätt när man blir lite gammal och skröplig. Men det förutsätter ju att det hela tiden föds nya människor. Att vi blir mer medborgare i basen på den här pyramiden. De så kallade bidragen som de får, vad gör de med det? Jo, de går ju till affären och handlar. Det innebär det att handlarna i butikerna här, de får ju tillbaka de pengarna. Ser inte du en parallell att om det skulle komma två miljoner invandrare till Sverige eller tre miljoner eller fyra miljoner då skulle ju svenskan inte längre vara ett självklart språk i, på, på gatorna. Och det, det är ju, Sverige skulle bli ett helt annat samhälle. Jag menar, kristen, och, k- kanske det kommer den poängen där eh, kommer till en tillfälle att svenskarna kommer att vara den positionen som Estonien var på 80-talet. Det vill säga ett litet land som kanske inte kunde garantera sin kultur längre. Ja, men då är det ju också frågan om vad är det för kultur som är svensk i sammanhanget? Koldolmar, spaghetti och så vidare. Väldigt mycket av det som vi tar som typiskt svenskt, det har ju importerats en gång i tiden i små portioner. Hur bra vi än har det så finns det människor som råkar illa ut. Och då är det frågan om hur vi ska hjälpa dem på olika sätt. Måste de vara kvar i sitt elände eller kan man på olika sätt hjälpa och stödja dem och ge dem en möjlighet att förändra sitt liv i positiv riktning? Och ja, det är basen helt enkelt. But not everyone agrees with Rustan. Skeptics need not apply, however. There is huge ostracization of those who do not go along with this multiculturalism project. It seems that this cool new Malmö package does not include the freedom to dissent. Nima Gulam Alipur is an Iranian who is an elected politician at the local level for the Sweden Democrat Party. The Sweden Democrats describe themselves as social conservatives. They are also the only party that is opposed to the mass immigration project which is changing Sweden. As a result, they're completely demonized and excoriated by the mainstream politicians, as well as the media and the professional classes. But Nima represents the views of the little people. He spoke to us in a cafe and described how local politicians treat him. They try to put us out of the committees by making them smaller. Nice. That's one of the things they have done in Malmö. So if you have a if you have a committee that that are nine members, they make it seven members, so we don't get in. Uh, and when we ask them why do you do that, uh, no, we have an agreement and that's how we want to do it. There is no like real explanation in, in the districts. We have. The citizen dialogue groups, where politicians and citizens converse, and we're not welcome in those groups. Mm. So we are the only party that are not welcome in the citizen dialogue groups. 
there are politicians from all parties. And when we asked them what what's the reason for that, we are the third biggest party in Malmo. We have like uh, citizens who want to talk with us, and they say, no, you're not a democratic party. Do people understand the difference between criticizing immigration and criticizing immigrants? Because no. That, 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 that's, uh, that's so painful, you know, going every day and people telling me, oh, you're against immigrants. No, you know, I tell them, we talk about the immigration policy, that's not being against immigrants. And you know, people tell me crazy stuff. I was out uh, campaigning and people told me, oh, why are you with these Sweden Democrats? They, they hate you. And you know, I, said, I, I said to them, like, do, do, do you, do you see, look at us? Do, do, does it seem that they hate me or that we hate each other or that we hate anybody? And, uh, I, you know, I think uh, it's partly media's fault that we have this, this distortion that when people think that the immigrants at the, and the immigration policy is the same thing. And what where we are now in Sweden, it is at a point where people think that anything but the generous immigration policy or liberal immigration policy is racist. So Nima's trained as a school teacher, a historian, and ought to be hugely in demand at a time when people are quitting the teaching profession in droves because of insecurity and violence levels in the school system. Unfortunately, because of his political associations, Nima can't get a job anywhere. He has the wrong views. Well, I'm born in Holland, grew up in Norway. Uh, I'm used to speak my mind uh, with no problems, but um, in Sweden you can't do that without getting in trouble. Uh, if you're not political uh, correct, uh, you get kicked out of um, your job, uh, organizations. Uh. Do you know of anyone who's done that's happened to? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> like I know a teacher uh, that spoke her mind on Facebook. She got fired. Uh, so it's, uh, what did she say? Oh, she was talking negative about the Islamists, uh, not the Muslims, but the Islamists. Yeah, but she was not talking is negative about Muslims, she was just about Islamists, right? Exactly. So, uh, but uh, here in Sweden that's racism. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the most difficult parts of my professional life here in Sweden. The irritation over that the people don't have courage to, to, to present uh, controversial ideas or, 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 or and also the incapable to handle these things in, 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 in the collective. And for example, in the institutional meetings, it happens often that uh, I had some controversial idea and didn't like the, the proposed things and I was arguing and, and, and uh, and, and uh, fighting for my, my, my ideas. And then you suddenly see that you are, everybody is drinking coffee, looking down in the, the table, and you are losing the, the, the eye contacts because they, they are some way not comfortable with the situation. Then, then we put together a little committee. And of course, after that, people forget the problem and uh, somebody makes some decision somewhere. But that is also when you go out from this meeting at the elevator, uh, there are some people who come to you. Ah, it was very good that you said, Irene. Really, you had, you had, you had so right. Huh? Mm -hmm. you know, this it's very, very strange. You know this, how they can live with this kind of. of, of, of uh, how do uh, things get done in this country? I mean, it's a prosperous country. The yearned fighting. The bara elo. I ska säga så här. 80 percent circa då svenskarna är jämntvättade redan hur länge som helst det har pågått och jag, jag har inget svar på det varför man är så jävla dum om man säger så men 20 procenten de just som röstar på SD och de som ser de förtrycks just nu ja, ja. det är så det är i Polen förtrycktes inte folket de visste vad som pågår de, man på, på något sätt väntade tills det smäller 
Men, men man väntar det inte som en jäkla osna. Ja, ja, det är något fel på svenska folket. Ja. Det är det som är det största problemet. Och sen det andra, det är just de 20 procenten som förtrycks. Mm, mm. Det är de som eh, är de jävla rasister och nazister. För, förtrycks och de på ett värre sätt än vad som händer i Polen? Absolut. Absolut, det tycker jag. Absolut på värre sätt. Ja. Kanske inte just att i, i både i DDR till exempel och i Ryssland tog man och fängslade människor. Ja. Men här förlorar, förlorar folket jobb. Ja. Ja, De kan ju... inte vara med i facket. De får inget jobb. Ja. Är det inte samma sak, ja. ursäkta ja. mig? Kriminaliteten har oerhört att helt. Det går inte att jämföra 80-90-talet till dagens Malmö. Det slut bröm man sig inte. Alltså om, om ungdomar som, som röker i bussar och på kvällen och brockar och trakasserar passagerare. Alltså i Polen, då, de flesta skrattar mot i Sverige. Alltså då, folk vet vad som händer i Sverige och, och i Europa och Tyskland. Många som kommer tillbaka och flyttar tillbaka till Polen, unga människor som vill stadga sig och bilda familj, de flyttar trots alla att de har levt bättre i västländer och jobbat och haft det bättre, flyttar ändå tillbaka för att deras barn ska växa upp i våningen. Alltså inte som samhälle som i Tyskland, England och Sverige. Inte de, de tror inte på framtiden i, 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 i de länderna, alltså vad gäller kultur och, 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 och värderingar och europeiska värderingar och sånt. De vill inte leva i sånt. Det... Jag håller med dig. Alla vet vad som händer i Sverige. Det är svenskarna som inte vet. Folk som inte vill ha mer invandring, tycker du att Sverigedemokraterna behandlas rättvist? Eh, ja, problemet är ju här det att det bygger ju på så otroligt mycket okunskap. Ja. Rykten, man hör vet, nu förskräckliga historier om den och den som har kommit ur. Plötsligt här då så tillskrivs all kriminalitet som överhuvudtaget inträffar i samhället. Mm. Det blir plötsligt då invandrare som sköter det, mm. som står för den delen. Mm. Nej, man ska vara lite, lite granna skeptisk till de historier som mm. man hör. Mm. Och det är ju också polisens egen rapportering. Mm. Är det så att det råkar brinna en bil? Mm. Ja, eftersom de inte då kan... Eh, direkt förstå att det är ett elektriskt fel mm. som förorsakar branden ju. Mm. Ja, då betecknar de som mordbrand. Mm. Mordbrand, jaha, nu är det någon sån där vettvillig som är ute i samhället på nytt igen. Mm. Mm. Um, jag tror att man måste vara lite noggrannare med sitt val utav beteckning på olika händelser i samhället mm. för att det skapar och vilseleder ibland människor och tror att vi bor i ett betydligt sämre samhälle än vad vi egentligen bor men, men ska man, Många är ju inte informerade och är reda för det nya. Tycker du att man ska kalla dem för främlingsfientliga och packa ner på dem som media gör? Nej, det är ju, det är ju helt galet. Ju. Det är ju i regel hyggliga och vänliga människor, men de har fått en del saker om bakfoten. Ju. Mm. You could ask yourself, is multiculturalism in favor of social change or not? That is a very important question. And I would say that multiculturalists as being leftists, you know, or defended by people who perceive themselves as being leftists, they have a problem with the idea of social change. Because if all we have to do when we see exotic, you know, quote unquote exotic cultures, is to recognize these cultures, because that's what also multiculturalism is about. It's about a kind of peaceful, passive recognition of the other and the culture of the other. Mm. Then <laughs> there is a, you know, an imminent risk that these cultures will not change. 
And, you know, myself being a modernist, I think there is a problem with this, mm. because uh, this is a dangerous thing to say, mm. you know, you might jeopardize a lot of things. Uh, it's a dangerous thing to say that, that it might be a good thing for certain cultures to change. Mm. And, uh, for instance, their approach to women, for instance, their approach to the state, the idea of the state, you know, a transition from the clan or from the tribe to the state, and uh, notions such as freedom of speech, etc. And uh, because if you say this, people, you know, <clears throat> you're asking for trouble because people will, will, will tell you, well, so you think you're better than anybody else. Of course I'm not better, but I do think that, that there are certain cultures who have maybe been able to deal with certain things in a better way than other cultures. You know, if you talk about Jews in Malmö, yeah. the official discourse was that the Jews in Malmö were harassed by Swedish neo-Nazis. But if you go to Malmö and have a look, you will not find many neo-Nazis. You know, there might be one or two, but they are not responsible for the fact that the Jews in Malmö have left. Yeah. Basically, they have left. So the threat, um, the reason why the Jews in Malmö have left is because they have been attacked by Muslims. Yeah. Not all Muslims, of course, but Muslim groups and Muslim, uh, mostly Muslim young men. And uh, you can't say this, even though it is true. So there are certain things you can't say, even though they're true. And there are other things you're, you're, you're free to say, even though they are not true, you know. So what you say, as, as a multiculturalist, you go on saying the right things, which are wrong. But you can say them, and you should say them because it protects you and it gives you a lot of friends and you can write a lot of articles and uh, everything you say is bogus, but it doesn't matter. So social reality no longer matters. I think England is the best example if you want to talk about the failures of multiculturalism, but I think, say for Sweden, I think Sweden is an even better example. In Sweden, for instance, in academia, you have a hegemonic discourse. And it means that people are, are afraid to speak up. And, uh, and this is dangerous. Because then you no longer have a discussion about things. You have people who, like, you know, they wave their finger and they try to find out where the wind is blowing. Mm. And then they go in this direction. Uh, so you create a situation where people are nervously looking for appeal. They are nervously looking for maximum number of appreciation. Mm. And in society, also in politics, you have also a situation where there are a lot of things that you're not allowed to say. And, and you have, most of all I would say, you have a situation where everything is being polarized. Mm. Where you have, and I was, I mean, if you would like to create a situation where you, where you have right-wing fanatics mm. who say all kinds of bizarre things, mm. And, and then, on the other hand, you have the multiculturalists who say the opposite things. Mm. Then you should, you should have a look at the, the, uh, the, uh, the last few years in Sweden. Because I think politicians, and journalists mm. and the academia has, whether they know it or not, they have created, carefully created a situation which is, which is, I would think, on the brink of explosion. The, the difference in atmosphere between Germany, where you worked as a postdoc, and mm -hmm. Sweden. Can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so in Germany, I mean, you could, I mean, uh, criticize anything and in any way you want. But then when I came back to Sweden here, I mean, I, I, I realized that the situation here is quite different than here. I mean, if you, if you give serious criticism of someone's research here, then you might be in, 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 in trouble, actually. So it's, uh, it's, well, that was kind of awakening for me to coming back to Sweden in that, in that sense. And uh, 
So I think that uh, uh, also in the UK, I think you have a quite a different academic uh, environment when it comes to uh, the kind of criticism that, that you can raise. I mean, we have a collegial system where you're supposed to criticize whatever you find uh, objectionable. And uh, I mean, without that, you can't, you can't really secure uh, the quality of research and teaching. And uh, so if that component is lacking, I mean, that's a, that's a complete failure of the university system, in my view. There are actually severe threats to that kind of academic environment and, uh, and that threat is coming from various places. It's coming from for new public management, which is a management philosophy which w wants to turn the whole academia into some kind of private business. But it also comes from other parts of society. It comes from the government who wants to implement its own political agendas through top-down governance. So you have all kinds of forces acting precisely in this, this direction of, of silencing criticism and, and uh, uh, making academia uh, less uh, uh, independent. I think that uh, there are certain agendas that Swedish, uh, is fam uh, Sweden is famous for and uh, so you have I mean, the multicultural agenda, you have, uh, uh, you have various agendas in various disciplines like uh, strangely enough in forestry you have a, a particular agenda for, for um, promoting the Swedish model of uh, forestry. And uh, there are also other areas, I mean, for instance, when it comes to prostitution, Sweden has a, a certain position where, you, where we, have, uh, we, have, uh, we are punishing, uh, I mean, buying sexual services, which is also part of the Swedish brand, so to speak. Mm. when we could have sent him to the playground as our Swedish sisters do. Sweden is a very successful brand. It is, yes. And sometimes when you see adverts for Volvo or Ikea, yeah. they use, they sell it, that, oh, you British are so conservative, have some Swedish feminism. Yeah. And it's like yeah. the company and the country sell each other, you know? Yes. Ikea relies on yes, Sweden, Yes, of course, yeah. Ikea, yes. And Volvo, so, and everyone <clears throat> is talking with the same voice. That's isn't true, that, yeah. Isn't that a very good success story for Sweden? Everybody loves Sweden. I mean, Sweden has got the fantastic reputation in the world. Yes, uh, that's true. And we have a very, I mean, kind of progressive agenda on, on all kinds of things. And uh, yes, you're right. I mean, it's uh, many profit why, from that why agenda. Why are your dark <laughs> secrets, you know? You'll just make yourself unpopular. Yes, but, uh, you know, in academia, truth is the most important yeah. thing. So we are, we, are, we are not really interested in what promotes uh, the Swedish brand or the, or the, or the brands of various uh, Swedish companies. We are interested in where, where, in where the truth lies in various issues. And uh, we're interested in, in fact-checking and all that kind of stuff. So, so uh, to the extent that that goes against the Swedish brand, I mean, you have a, you, we have a problem. And in a way, the u new public management, the universities are now a brand as well. Yes, exactly. And, and do I get the impression that it's difficult for you as a professor to say this, but uh, students uh, are spot bought on the university brand. And if, the, mm -hmm. if you have a difficult academic who is, you know, doesn't say the right thing, right. then that's a problem. And he's something bad about the media mm -hmm. comes up and then mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to drop him rather than protect him. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I heard some strange rumors. My old head of head of department, well, a friend of mine, she she talked to her and she said, "Well, we don't know if he's a Nazi or not." And my very good friend, she was shocked, and for weeks she didn't say anything to me. And eventually she did, and and I said, "Well, I'm not, you know, but that's a, that's not a nice thing to hear." And then they were scaling down, and then I was singled out, you know very oddly. So I lost my job and uh, Dean, my faculty, he uh, suddenly made a complete U-turn and he started attacking me. He said there were lots of problems with me and uh, lots of problems with the students and, and colleagues etc. And I said, so give examples, I said. And he couldn't. That was, uh, that was like three weeks after my book had, 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 had appeared. My book was not called a critique from the right, a critique against multiculturalism from the right, because if, if that would have been the title, mm -hmm. they would have thrown me out, you know, you know, in no time. My, my the title of my book was a critique from the left. Uh, that must have made them very concerned, because the entire Malmö University College 
rests on a foundation of multiculturalism, as does Malmö, the, the, the city of Malmö also has a multicultural foundation. So they must have been pretty uneasy when, when somebody like me said that, that you've got it all wrong. This is a Trojan horse. You think multiculturalism is a nicely lefty, mm -hmm. progressive, radical idea. It's not. My situation is not unusual. And, and I have a lot of good colleagues who still work at Malum University College. And uh, some of them have a hard time because they, they also question things that you're not allowed to say. They also question things you're not allowed to question. What technique do your colleagues use in order not to get themselves fired? <coughs> well, <coughs> one technique is not to think. We're completely independent politically and ideologically and religiously and so yeah. on, you know. And the idea is to defend freedom of speech and academic freedom. The, the actual cases, they vary. It, it can vary from individual professors who have been um, uh, reprimanded by the vice-chancellor for some things. Or we have cases where uh, research articles have been removed from the university databases because they are uncomfortable with regard to official state policy. We have communication policies introduced by universities which infringe on, on the Swedish constitution, uh, especially on the Freedom of Speech Act. Higher education uh, and science t can take a very hard blow if it's governed by political ideology too much. We have, we have the, uh, the bad examples of uh, the Soviet Union and, and also of uh, Germany in, in, in the Nazi period and so on. So there are some lessons saying in order to avoid that from happening, mm -hmm. we should have some principles. Um, and they're laid down in UNESCO and they're laid down in, in, uh, in the... And Sweden is now moving away from that. So Swedish universities are no longer uh, um, abiding to the principles set down in UNESCO. I was, I was lecturing on John Stuart Mill and uh, then in the middle of the classroom was this Swedish Muslim convert, all dressed in black, with a white powdered face and uh, well that was it. I didn't say anything out of the ordinary. In fact I was citing John Stuart Mill a few times and I believe you can do that. Anyway, a few days later I got a pretty unpleasant email fin and she finished off, off by saying the student dressed in her pride. And the email contained, you know, a lot of pretty uh, superficial allegations and misunderstandings of science. And, uh, and she said I hadn't been neutral, whatever that is. Then I was called up, not once or twice or three times, but four times and five times to the head of department to talk to, to this woman and another woman. And uh, this was like um, a court proceeding. And I was accused, I felt, for having lectured on John Stuart Mill. And I also told him. Why am I here? After eight months, and I think I, I, must have, I must have sent about 100 emails, maybe 150 emails, I don't know. I was acquitted. The case was closed, and I was deemed not guilty of defamation, not guilty of discrimination. I was let off the hook, so to speak. And I thought, you, you know, you took 1,000 hours of my life. What then happened was that she took it to Justitieombudsmannen, 
which is the highest JU in Sweden. And Justitiumsman is the highest instance in Sweden in terms of, you know, cases about discrimination and defamation. And that is actually all I know at present. And the fact that people are, seem to be so keen to blow these things up out of proportion makes me worried about the situation of free speech in academia. If this goes on, we might end up in a situation where lecturers will no longer talk in front of students because they know that all, re all, all that is required for a student is to press the red button and then you have, you know, at best eight months of allegations against you. One of the problems with imposing truth from above by ideology is that reality finally comes and bites you in the back. The Swedish elite have imposed this ideological truth about the multicultural society. But what does reality really look like? The trouble is, the critics are not listened to. A few weeks ago I was contacted by Australian television. I referred them to a guy called Jan Hunesen, who's a former headmaster, debater and editor of an alternative website. He in turn took them out to the suburbs, and there they had a bruising encounter. For all its generosity, Sweden is now grappling with communities of disaffected migrants who can't find jobs and have few prospects. The country's image was shattered three years ago when riots broke out in the Stockholm suburb of Husby. There are now 55 declared no-go zones in Sweden where police have to escort ambulances to ensure their safety. Yeah, my cousin lives in Melbourne. Many locals are polite and friendly. <laughs> and happy to talk. It's good. Yeah. I'm very happy. But what happened next changed everything. The police leave, and as we prepare to go, young men masking their faces arrive. Good, you're doing good. You're doing good? Yeah. Okay, very good. Take it easy. Okay, you too. And attack. <laughs> The gang's attention turns when a local intervenes and drives his mobility scooter into the most violent attacker. Move, move. We've been individually uh, attacked. Uh, sound man has been punched, the producer's been punched, you've been run over, the cameraman. Uh, we've all been assaulted and insulted. It's uh, best we leave. Svenska medier tycker att absolut borde inte uttala sig om andra med länders medier för och speciellt inte kritisera dem. För det som händer i, i svenska medier liknar mycket, mycket den kommunistiska medier i, i gamla Polen, i, i den kommunistiska Polen som störs. Alltså man rapporterar inte hela sanningen, man rapporterar det man vill, eller det man blir tillsagt att rapportera och det, det är nästan ingen skillnad nu i Sverige alltså det, det är som finare på, på ett fint sätt men själva mekanismen och, 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 och roten är samma alltså det, det, ibland undrar jag om det är ja, kanske bara kommunister som, som sitter i medierna i alla medier och, och bestämmer och det, varför, kommer, varför diskuterar man aldrig om de grova grovvåldtäkter som muslimer eller afghaner var det först och sen var det Somalia där på färjan från Finland till Sverige? Eh, varför diskuteras inte detta? Utan dels måste man läsa det på alternativa medier. Ja, ja. Varför finns alternativa medier för ja, det första? Ja, ja. För hade de andra gjort sitt jobb mm. så 
sa hade inte de andra behövt eller hur? V- vad tycker de till exempel Sydsvenska Dagbladet, den alltså, största jag, tidningen i, i Malmö? Vi hade sånt ordspråk i Polen på kommunistiska tider. Mm. Eh, ja, men jag har läst det i tidningen. Ja, men den tidningen kan vi torka arslet med. Do you think Swedish newspapers are quite propagandistic then? Horrible. At least some of those, like uh, Sydsvenska Dagbladet. That's all. Now I went over to the Svenska Dagbladet. It's a little better, probably, other level. But it's still, uh, you know, very, very little uh, diversification of, of things. Yeah. And I don't know if there is some other newspaper to read. Not in Swedish, I think. No. Sweden has five or six alternative media newspapers. One is called Avpixat, which means depixelated. And there's one called The Free Times. And they themselves say, uh, we wouldn't have existed if the real newspapers told, their, told the story. Jan Schoenesson, who's the editor of one of them, says that uh, he reports truth and not political correctness. And I think what you would say is that they they publish the truth, but they don't publish the whole truth. That is, they don't publish every single angle to the story. So in that sense, they have an agenda. But again, you have to read um, when the mainstream media say, call these sites hate sites and that they're propagandistic. Well, they're just as propagandistic at the very least. Some people cried when they when they talked to you because they felt that they were no longer racists or something like that. What's, what was that story? Some people who were loyal to what they call the Sweden Democratic Party, and some people who were curious about them, and some people who were just you know frustrated. And, and uh, after a few pints and, and drinks of wine, they they gathered, and, and the woman said, "Yeah, can you please lead us in talk about our experiences, how we came to this place, to you, who are the infamous." person here, opponent of the government, and uh, we can just tell what, what we've been through. And some people, women, they cry because they said, I've been an outcast in my, in my, in my family, my, my, my closest friends don't want to talk to me, and here I am, a stranger, and I can finally speak the truth. It was like an evangelical meeting with Pentecostals who were saying, I met Christ. You know, Amazing. They were crying. With the, and the thing was, it was the truth. Even what, what Mahatma Gandhi he said in the 1930s, he, he coined the, the slogan Satya Gra. Mm. Satya is the truth, mm. and Gra is showing the way. Mm. That was me for him. Mm. So I feel that there is a truth out there. All this internet is fine, and the fine website and all this. But people need to be able to look each other in the eye. Mm. Say what you were going to say about yeah. Malmo. Fourth of the budget from in Malmo doesn't come from the taxpayers in Malmo, but all of Sweden holds Malmo under under their arms. Malmo can't be the model. It, it's a a test of how bad it will get until the rest of Sweden turns and they can put up sensible policies around the immigration. I don't think I don't want it to go bad. I think it's really really bad now. You have shootings, you have murders, hand grenades are being thrown into houses in Malmö. This used to be or is probably something for what you call organized crime, but a lot of people, just Malmö citizens, innocent people, children, women who are walking the streets between these gangs, will, they've already been killed.
the way that he he's, like, he's always called a hater is just completely unacceptable. And I think it, it, it's a real Achilles heel of the way Sweden functions, that um, he is just automatically dismissed. You always see this example of Eastern Europe coming up. And I think, I always, I always feel that you sh one shoots over the target and, and loses credibility points when you say it's an East European society. And I've done that many times when I said it's like Soviet Union. It's obviously not like the Soviet Union. Uh, but on the other hand, it's not, it's, it's, it is a slightly autocratic mentality. And you've got to be able to say that and get it exactly right without kicking the ball over the goal, as it were. Uh, by saying it's a full-blown autocratic society, and he doesn't want to compare himself to dissident. I mean, all these Vaxav Havel who spent 10 years in house arrest for writing. I mean, it's not like that. But, you know, it's a little bit like that. If people get sacked, if people can't uh, say what they want, if people are afraid of saying what they want on Facebook because of fear that Express and newspapers hacked every single person's uh, internet account in Sweden, which is true, um, or this, uh, the, the fact that, amazing fact that um, a lawyer was told to unfriend a friend who'd liked something that was critical of immigration because the employer, a law firm, had gone through her every single Facebook post and all her friends. That's amazing. That's amazing. There's a huge contrast between uh, my Swedish friends, about half of my Facebook friends are Swedish and half are not. Um, my non-Swedish friends say whatever they like about everything, you know, but Swedish friends say, Nothing. Completely quiet. Ja, det är klart det. Men det har väl ingen betydelse var du bygger någonstans? Jo, men du kan ju inte bygga i ställen där det inte finns. Ja. <laughs> det är ju inte det de tar hänsyn till när de placerar vår i Sverige idag. De säger bara att den kommun sa 800, den sa 400, den sa 200. Ska permanent sitt boende i Skara måste ju finnas jobb för dem. Mm. Då ska, ska de bo, ska det bo i speciala... Men det är inte något som de bryr sig om på staten. De skickar ut det till kommunerna. De, de bryr sig inte om de har jobb. Men du är ju medverkande i detta i så fall. Ja, jag vet inte. Jag 
Jag förstår inte vad du pratar om. Jo, men... Jag kan inte ta hänsyn till om det finns jobb eller ej. Det måste stan göra. Ja, men i så fall är det ett gemensamma fel. Men det är klart. Det är klart det. Bert? Va? Vad har de gjort? Ja. ja det, är, det är inte sjukt. Mm. Nu skickar vi till minister, civilminister. Ja, ja. Mm. Mm. 430. 430. 430. Per dygn. Det är det. 